Hello, and welcome back. I'm Dr. William Lee, and today I want to walk you through some invaluable insights on managing your cholesterol levels naturally through diet. Cholesterol is a crucial factor in our heart health as it impacts how our arteries function and our overall well being. Small changes in diet can significantly lower cholesterol levels. So we will dive into the power of specific foods that can make a real difference in lowering cholesterol. Stick with me as we explore these strategies together to help you take charge of your heart health in a practical and effective way. There are lots of misconceptions about eggs and I want you to know that eggs are a healthy food. They are a great source of protein and if they're high quality eggs, they also provide bioactives called carotenoids that are beneficial for your vision. And eggs, which used to be thought of being harmful to your heart, actually have proven benefits uh, for heart health. It's true that eggs are high in cholesterol, but study after study after study have shown that the people who are eating eggs don't actually have high levels of harmful cholesterol, all right? In fact, what they have, they have better levels of good, healthy cholesterol, all right? So one clinical study from the University of Connecticut looked at 38 young, healthy men and women, these are people aged 18 to 30 years old, and they gave them either one or three two or three eggs to eat per day for four weeks. And uh, what they found is that egg eaters actually had better good HDL cholesterol of about 13%, uh, all right? And this created a healthier lipid profile. The other thing that the study showed was that eggs helped to increase blood levels of the carotenoids called lutein and zeaxanthin. Remember I told you carotenoids are, you know, these natural bioactives that are found in eggs. What do they do? They help maintain healthy vision. They improve the function of your retina, the carpet layer of nerves that's in the back of your eye. When light goes into your eye, it passes through the front, the cornea, through the lens, and it gets focused on the back of your eye, the retina, and lutein and zeaxanthin help retinal health. In fact, a study found that egg eaters had 20 to 30% increase in lutein and zeaxanthin, Again, these are bioactives that decrease the risk of vision loss from diseases like age-related macular degeneration. That's the most common cause of blindness over the age of 65. Lutein and zeaxanthin also reduce the risk of developing cataracts, which is another problem as people get older. This is an opacification or a cloudiness that can occur in the lens, the natural lens of the eye, all right? And that obscures vision. Eggs contain nutrients like betaine and choline, which are known to support heart health by helping to regulate cholesterol levels. Choline, in particular, plays a crucial role in the breakdown of cholesterol and prevents it from accumulating in the liver. This process helps to maintain healthy cholesterol levels in the bloodstream. Additionally, eggs are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which have been shown to reduce LDL, bad, cholesterol levels while increasing HDL, good, cholesterol levels. Omega-3s also help to prevent the oxidation of LDL cholesterol, which reduces the risk of heart disease. Research has also indicated that the type of dietary cholesterol found in eggs may not have as significant an impact on blood cholesterol levels as once thought. Instead, factors such as overall diet quality and lifestyle choices play a more substantial role in determining cardiovascular health outcomes. Therefore, moderate egg consumption as part of a balanced diet can be beneficial for heart health without significantly raising cholesterol levels. Eggs are also a good source of vitamin A, which is necessary for maintaining good vision. If you want to talk about quality of life, let's talk about your, how important the sense of sight is, right? You want your retina to be good. You want your lens to be good. You want overall your eyes and your vision to be healthy. So eggs are not only heart healthy, they're vision healthy as well. Now here's another benefit. Eggs are brain healthy. And the reason is eggs can, are a dietary source of something called choline. This is another bioactive. Choline is required for nerve development. It's also involved with brain health. You also need choline for muscle health and liver health and nerve health as well. A single egg contains 100 milligrams of choline. Now what's the daily recommended intake of choline? it's between four and 500 milligrams a day. So one egg with 100 milligrams 
get you 20% of the way, right? That's a good way to actually get that stuff that's necessary for nerve health, including brain health. Some eggs also have healthy omega-3 fatty acids, and you probably know how important omega-3s are, right? We talk about seafood uh, and um, having marine omega-3 fatty acids that come from plankton. Well, eggs can have them as well. And here's how that works. Well, if the hen that lays the healthy eggs are raised cage-free, they're free range, and they're actually eating natural foods, meaning they're pasture fed. The natural seeds that the uh, chicken, the hen eats, actually converts uh, uh, the substances in the seeds into omega-3 fatty acids that winds up building up in their eggs. All right, so you are what your hen ate when it comes to eggs. Healthier raised hens also just have better overall health, which means their eggs are gonna be healthy as well, right? Think about prenatal care for humans. You got prenatal care for hens as well, if you want healthy eggs. Now, omega-3s, as you know, are very important for health because they're anti-inflammatory. Omega-3s also promote gut health. They feed your gut microbiome. And omega-3s also improve your immune system, immune health as well. Omega-3s also can reduce blood triglycerides. And this is actually important because there's not too many medications that can actually reduce triglycerides. Omega-3s, including from eggs, can actually lower this kind of harmful lipid that's responsible for cardiovascular disease. So another reason that eating eggs might contribute to heart health. So where was this idea that eggs are not healthy uh, coming from? How did that actually even happen? Well, I like to bust myths and some of the myth busting comes from actually understanding the historical context, all right? So let's go back, way back in the time machine to the 1970s. And it turned out that some of the studies that led to the thinking that egg eating was harmful to the heart had to do with the fact that we didn't know much about cholesterol. We didn't know about LDL and HDL. We just all thought cholesterol was cholesterol. We didn't know that there were there was good cholesterol. So that wasn't even being measured in the studies. All right, and what I told you was that eating eggs actually raises good cholesterol without raising the bad cholesterol. Further research has shown that the relationship between dietary cholesterol, like that found in eggs, and blood cholesterol levels is more complex than previously thought. While eggs do contain cholesterol, it's been found that dietary cholesterol has less of an impact on blood cholesterol levels than saturated and trans fats do. In fact, for most people, consuming eggs in moderation, around one egg per day, does not significantly raise blood cholesterol levels or increase the risk of heart disease. Eggs contain beneficial nutrients such as antioxidants lutein and zeaxanthin, which are important for eye health, as well as protein and various vitamins and minerals. These nutrients contribute to overall health and well-being. Recent dietary guidelines reflect this updated understanding. Both the American Heart Association and the Dietary Guidelines for Americans no longer set a specific limit on dietary cholesterol intake, although they still recommend choosing a diet low in saturated and trans fats for heart health. Eating blueberries reduces inflammation. And the reason is that these bioactives, the anthocyanin, proanthocyanin, and quercetin are powerful reducers of whole body inflammation. And we know that inflammation is responsible as a root cause of many chronic diseases. So it doesn't matter what you got, if you actually eat blueberries and reduce inflammation, that's actually gonna be beneficial to your health and help you heal faster. Okay, the third point I wanna make about eating blueberries is they actually improve your immune defenses as well. And this is a really interesting one. Why do we want good immune defenses? Well, it protects us from infection from the outside world, for example, but a really good immunity also protects us from cancer because our immune system conducts surveillance throughout our body and looks for abnormal cells like cancer cells and wipes them right out. So there was a clinical study that was actually done at Louisiana State University where um, they actually studied blueberries uh, in the form of a smoothie versus a placebo, of course. That's how a good clinical study is done. And what they did is they enrolled people who had metabolic syndrome. Now, you may or may not have metabolic syndrome, but a lot of people uh, have metabolic syndrome. What is that? Well, that's a combination of high blood pressure, high blood lipids, like your cholesterol, triglycerides, high LDL, bad cholesterol, high blood sugars, all right? 
You know, we talk about glucose spikes, but actually what it is is that higher levels generally of your blood sugar and a big waistline, because when your waistline is bigger, it means that you're more stuffed with visceral inflammatory fat. Okay, so they enrolled, this one study enrolled people with metabolic syndrome, and they gave them blueberries in the form of a smoothie. How much they give? Just one and a half cups of blueberry powder in this case. Um, they put them in yogurt with a little bit of milk. So what they did is they actually measured in the blood immune cells before and after um, having the blueberry smoothies. And guess what they found? They found drinking the blueberry smoothie led to an 88% increase, increase in special immune cells called myeloid dendritic cells. Myeloid dendritic cells help protect against infection. In contrast to people who had the placebo smoothie, no blueberries had no increases in these special immune myeloid dendritic cells. Blueberries are known for their beneficial effects on cholesterol levels, particularly in reducing LDL cholesterol, often referred to as bad cholesterol. This effect is attributed to several bioactive compounds present in blueberries, such as anthocyanins, flavonoids, and fiber. Anthocyanins, which give blueberries their vibrant color, are powerful antioxidants that have been shown to improve cholesterol profiles. They work by reducing oxidative stress and inflammation in the body, which are key factors in the development of cardiovascular disease. Additionally, anthocyanins help prevent the oxidation of LDL cholesterol, which makes it less likely to contribute to the formation of plaque in the arteries. Flavonoids, another group of compounds found in blueberries, also play a role in lowering LDL cholesterol. They help improve blood vessel function and reduce the risk of atherosclerosis, the buildup of plaque in the arteries. Flavonoids work synergistically with anthocyanins to enhance cardiovascular health. Research shows that blueberries are rich in soluble fiber, which binds to cholesterol in the digestive tract and helps excrete it from the body. This mechanism further contributes to reducing LDL cholesterol levels. Incorporating blueberries into your diet regularly, whether fresh, frozen, or dried, can be a delicious and effective way to support heart health by lowering LDL cholesterol and promoting overall cardiovascular wellness. Why is it so crucial to take care of our hearts besides the obvious? Well, you are absolutely right. Your heart is the most important muscle in your body because it pumps blood to every organ. Mm. And when you have a healthy uh, heart, you have a healthy body, and including a healthy brain. Mm. And heart health is so important because the Heart disease is the number one cause of death in America. According to the CDC, last year killed 690,000 people, wow. leading cause of death in women. Wow. wow. See, that's the thing people don't realize. It, it affects women so much. It's very, it's like whispered about almost. So number so, one, you got to yeah. watch your blood lipids, yes? That's right. Well, there's a bunch of things you could do. Number one, watch your blood lipids. So this is the test that your doctor does to look at cholesterol, right? You've got good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Good, there's, there's good cholesterol as well, right? That's right. Okay. So, it, so what we want is high levels of beneficial cholesterol called HDL, which protects your heart, okay. and low levels of the harmful cholesterol called LDL, which can be harmful. And you can find, uh, to lower the, the, the risk of this, you can actually eat less saturated fats, which you find in red meat, butter, cheeses, this is actually in a lot of processed foods uh, as well because they actually are sometimes made with saturated fats like palm oil. Reducing saturated fats is crucial because they can raise LDL cholesterol levels in your bloodstream. Saturated fats are commonly found in foods like red meat, butter, and full fat dairy products. They can also sneak into processed foods such as baked goods and snacks, often in the form of palm oil or coconut oil. By cutting back on these sources of saturated fats, you can help lower your LDL cholesterol, reducing your risk of heart disease. In addition to watching your fat intake, incorporating more heart-healthy foods into your diet can make a significant difference. Foods rich in soluble fiber, such as oats, beans, fruits, and vegetables, can help lower LDL cholesterol. Soluble fiber works by binding to cholesterol particles and removing them from your body, preventing them from being absorbed into your bloodstream. Another dietary approach is to include foods that contain healthy fats, such as nuts, seeds, and fatty fish like salmon or trout. These foods provide omega-3 fatty acids, 
which can help raise HDL cholesterol levels, the good cholesterol that helps protect your heart. Moreover, adopting a Mediterranean-style diet, which emphasizes fruits, vegetables, whole grains, fish, and olive oil, while limiting red meat and dairy, has been shown to improve cholesterol levels and reduce cardiovascular risk. Is it bad to put butter and cheese on your steak? <laughs> Probably. That's a good one. Well, listen, I think we, the whole issue is <laughs> actually cut both. down. Cut down those saturated Got fats. It. Now, instead, what we should be doing is actually eating unsaturated fats, healthy fats, like olive oil mm. uh, or omega-3s, which you actually find in uh, seafood. Okay. Now, the other thing to eat actually is fiber foods. So leafy dark greens uh, are great. Beans, lentils, nuts, chickpeas, all great for you. And new research shows that actually they lower bad cholesterol by feeding your gut microbiome, the healthy gut bacteria. So better gut health means better heart health too. How else can we keep our hearts healthy? Like what about our blood pressure? Like what is, because I've heard, I've heard that women going through menopause can have a lot of fluctuations in their blood pressure, in their cholesterol levels, all of that. I've heard it from some of the women here going through it. <laughs> Easy tip is actually watch the amount of salt you eat because salt found in our food raises blood pressure. So stay away from salty chips, uh, you know, savory snacks, and even cans of soup. A can of soup can have a thousand milligrams of sodium, Love which soup. raises your blood pressure. So what's really cool is a new research shows that we should be eating things like spinach and beets because they grow in the ground. They, nitrogen gets absorbed. When we chew and eat beets and uh, spinach, our mouth microbiome, healthy gut bacteria in our mouth, converts the nitrogen into a form that when we swallow it, turns to nitric oxide, dilates our blood vessels, and lowers our blood pressure. Tell us more, how do we, how do we maintain this healthy heart? Well, you gotta watch your blood sugar. Now, here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is our body needs sugar to run our organs, including our sugar. brain. She loves sugar. Okay, Cake. so, however, here's the key thing. Over time, high blood sugar, we call it hyperglycemia, destroys the lining of your blood vessels, which sets you up for heart disease. Mm. And so that's, and also, by the way, sugar causes inflammation, it's linked to diabetes and obesity. So, what we should do to avoid high sugar Avoid sodas, because they're really loaded with sugars, okay. and be really careful. Cut down or cut out your candies and cake. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> what if you have candy that's shaped like a fruit? Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> Any other, like, what are some, like, lifestyle changes that we should make? Yeah. Right, well, so diet's important, but actually other lifestyle factors matter a lot. For example, exercise. If you actually exercise, stay physically active, 30 to 40 minutes a day. You don't have to work out, just have brisk walk is good enough, lowers your risk of heart disease. Second, sleep. Seven hours or more of sleep lowers your heart disease risk by 42%. That's a lot. That is a lot. And third is stress. Now, who hasn't been stressed in the last year, right? So stress raises our blood pressure, so you gotta find ways to relax, chill out, hang out with friends or family you like, can make a big difference in your heart. <laughs> No cake, more sleep, no stress. That's uh, it. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> um, okay, so how can you monitor your heart health? Is there a way, like, besides going to a doctor constantly? Well, the first thing is, is to go to your doctor. During the pandemic, a lot of people miss their doctor's appointments, so go to your doctor. Number two, if you've got risks for heart disease, might get an annual EKG, which checks the electrical rhythm of your heart, mm -hmm. check your blood lipids. That's something your doctor should do, but you should be aware of what your levels are, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. You might want to get a test called CRP, stands for C-reactive protein. This is an inflammatory marker in your blood that can predict heart disease. And finally, if you've got symptoms of heart disease, chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitations, you might want to tell your doctor who might order a test called a stress test to put you on a treadmill. They monitor your heart to see if everything's okay. For some individuals, medications like statins may be necessary to lower cholesterol effectively, especially if lifestyle changes alone aren't sufficient. These medications work by blocking the production of cholesterol in the liver or aiding in its removal from the bloodstream. By combining these strategies, eating a balanced diet low in saturated fats, rich in fiber and healthy fats, staying physically active, and possibly using medications if needed, you can effectively manage your cholesterol levels and promote long-term heart health. 
Taking proactive steps now can significantly reduce your risk of heart disease and its associated complications in the future. Thanks for joining me today as we explored foods and tips to maintain your cholesterol level. I hope you found these insights useful for your journey to better health. If you have any questions or need more information, drop a comment below. I'm eager to hear from you. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel for more health tips, and check out our other videos for even more ways to live a vibrant and fulfilling life. We will be back to you with another exciting video.